Hey, Chrissy, wanna watch a movie? Come, come, Mr. Blowfish. You get as much fulfillment out of movies as I do, so why don't you admit it? Okay. How about Watership Down? Come, come, Mr. Blowfish. Too many rabbits. Fair enough. Black Hawk Down? You disappoint me. I already know what it sounds like when a man is attacked in the back by a black hog shopper. All right, then. Harbinger Down. You mean the film that was intended to be a love letter to 80s science fiction and horror movies with a full commitment to practical effects, and it stars Lance Hendrickson? Yes, yes. This pleases me. <laughs> you said it, boy. Back in 2011, the prequel to The Thing, helpfully titled The Thing, was released. Opinions were mixed. Perhaps the most common complaint was the prequel's reliance on CGI for the titular monstrosity, given that the 1982 film is still held on a pedestal among practical effects purists. It then came as a shock to everyone to learn that practical aliens were originally created and used in the new production. For the most part, the hard work by Amalgamated Dynamics Inc. was completely scrubbed over with the CGI beasts. This post-production bait and switch left the heads of the company understandably miffed. This wasn't the first time their efforts had been replaced, but the thing was a dream project for them, so feelings were more bitter than ever. They released a video online showcasing their original effects and all of the great care, attention, and respect for the Carpenter film that they integrated into their work. You've probably seen the footage. It was like the YouTube equivalent of Rocky, the little underdog going the distance. So popular it was that it inspired ADI founders Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr. to produce a Kickstarter campaign. Aiming for a goal of $350,000, pocket change in filmmaking terms, they explained they wanted to create a film that was a homage to 80s sci-fi horror, which would also be fully committed to using practical effects. Without the threat of an overarching film studio salivating at the thought of undoing countless hours of hard work, they would be free to make the film how they wanted. The campaign ended up exceeding its goal, raking in a total of $384,000. It even broke a couple of Kickstarter records for horror and sci-fi related projects. With some additional funding procured from Dark Dunes Productions, and some of their own funding, ADI brought us Harbinger Down. Even if you are not a hardcore fan of 70s and 80s horror, the plot will seem very familiar. This is by design, intended to feel like a warm blanket of nostalgia. Mm-hmm, cosy and spooky. A group of students seek to study beluga whales. Along with their cranky college professor, they become passengers on a rustic crab fishing ship. Whilst investigating the whales, they find a strange object encased in a block of ice. They weigh up their options. Should they recover the mysterious object, or leave it be? Well, it wouldn't be much of a plot if they left it alone. And besides, they investigated the ice block in the thing, so they have to do it here. You'll never guess what happens next. As it thaws out, a shape-shifting alien creature escapes and slowly picks off the crew one by one, inciting an increasing atmosphere of paranoia and doubt among the survivors. So, yeah. This is basically I can't believe it's not the thing, with a couple of flavours from Alien and Aliens mixed in. Opening scene of the alien crash landing on Earth, the ice block, the enclosed frosty setting, Lance Henriksen, the reveal that one of the crew knew this secret was out there all along, it's all tried and true stuff, even down to replicating shots from the aforementioned films, and stuffing in minor references everywhere. The film's opening takes place on the thing's initial release date, and there's mentions of LV-426 and the chess wizard computer. <laughs> this can all go one of two ways for audiences. Either you'll appreciate the loving homages and little details, 
or you'll think it's too close to the 80s bone, and a bit hollow. This review is a bit different from my usual 100 years of horror criteria. This is not an old timey classic, or a recent masterpiece that unfortunately fell by the wayside. I'm sad to say that this review is not a recommendation. <laughs> Harbinger Down is a bad movie. Alec Gillis is a very talented effects artist, that is not in question, but he has no feature film writing or directing credits to his name, either before or after this film. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a surprise. The whole experience is flat and lacking tension, and the characters always seem to be slightly out of frame. It's a small thing, but it really started to wear on me. Keep me in the frame? Exactly! Keep them in frame! The script has first draft written all over it. The most interesting character is about as exciting as an accountant dressed all in beige, very slowly jotting down a grocery list. The less said about the dialogue, the better. This is cutting edge. It's a portable molecular analyzer. Hey, Bowman. I wonder if that thing can analyze a fart. <laughs> <laughs> CSI Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> The most notable line of dialogue that seems to have resonated with people online is a tired Jaws reference. We're gonna need a bigger bucket. Yeah, I mean, it's been done much better elsewhere a million times. Oh my god. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna need a bigger chili bin. Yes, yes, I can hear you there in the back. Harbinger Down is about the practical effects, first and foremost. I agree. The effects work is done well, but sadly, they are often shot in poor lighting or edited too quickly, but they never get a chance to properly stand out. Yeah, they were trying to make it scary by not showing you too much, or basking it in shadow. Fuck that! This is a showcase for the effects, so show us the effects, in all their glory! Now you might be wondering why I chose this film, if my opinions sway largely to the negative. Truth is, I find the behind the scenes story fascinating, and the intentions of the team were very relatable and admirable. Myself and so many others really wanted this film to soar, but instead it crashed into an iceberg. Lance deserves better. It's easy enough to dismiss him as a fossil of a bygone era, coasting on past success, but screw that. Go watch Falling, the man can act. The rest of the Harbinger downcast really can't. Do you kiss my grandmother with that mouth? <laughs> no, what makes this film important to me, apart from the backstory, is the cinematic life lesson it confirms. You can have the best special effects in the world, but it means absolutely shit all if you don't have the script, actors, direction, and everything else to back it up. I grew up on Alien and the Thing just like everyone else, but I have become a bit tired with them. I know, I know, don't shoot, don't shoot. Especially after spending so much time online within film and horror communities. What's your favourite horror film? The Thing. Alien. Aliens. Same answers every time. But after watching Harbinger Down, I came back to realise just how great those characters were, how well the tension was crafted, etc. Obviously, Harbinger Down was operating on a much smaller scale, with a much smaller budget. So I do feel a bit bad, like I'm picking on the little snot-nosed no-friend loser at school. Hell, don't take my word for it, I'm an idiot. Watching under the correct conditions, with expectations a little checked, you might find Harbinger Down to be a fun throwback. It kind of serves its purpose in that regard. I just wish ADI hadn't taken on the script and directorial duties themselves. To summarise this whiny rant, I dislike the film, but respect the attempt, I'm very intrigued by the backstory, and it made me appreciate a couple of other films a lot more. Blah, who cares what I think? Chrissy, what did you make of Harbinger Down? Come come, I binge down, you disappoint me, I'm going to make my own ripoff of the thing with Black Jack and Hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Can it analyze a fart? 